Hello class, welcome to Calculus 1. And in this video here, what I want to do is I want to give you a preview to um, what exactly is calculus and kind of work through two um, common classical calculus problems. Okay, so, you know, when you're thinking about this class, what exactly is calculus? So calculus is the mathematics of change. All right, so for instance, calculus is the mathematics of velocities, accelerations, tangent lines, slope, areas, volumes, arc length, centroids, curvatures, and a variety of other concepts that enable scientists, engineers, and economists to model, this is important, real world situations. So calculus is real world mathematics. All right, if you think about it right, you know, we can't ro launch rockets into space without without understanding the velocities and the acceleration of those rockets. And so we need we need calculus to help us model these these situations. So although pre-calculus mathematics, you know, if you think back to your pre-calculus class also deals with velocities, accelerations, tangent lines, slopes and so on. There's a big fundamental difference between pre-calculus mathematics and calculus. OK, so calculus, pre-calculus, excuse me, pre-calculus mathematics is more static. OK, it's more like, hey, you know, sketch this graph or solve this equation, whereas calculus is more dynamic. It's about change. So the key concept here. Calculus is the mathematics of change. And so there's two fundamental problems um, that we study in this course. And those two problems are what are called the tangent line problem and the area problem. And what I want to do is I kind of want to walk you through them and talk about um, what's called the calculus uh, or how, what's called the, excuse me, obviously what's called calculus, but what's called the limit process and how this relates to calculus, okay, or, or, or what, what fundamental problems or fundamental concepts that these two problems are going to relate to. Okay, so let me, let me introduce the tangent line problem. Okay, so first off, the word tangent is derived from the Latin words uh, tangens, which means touching. So thus, a tangent. So if you want to be tangent to a curve, it's a line that touches the curve, just touches it at, at, at exactly one spot. So this line here is tangent to this circle at this point. So just, just touches it, just really just touches it right at that single point. Okay, just touches at this point. So in other words, a tangent line should have the same direction as the curve at the point of contact. So for example, if this curve is, is, is changing like this, okay, it's kind of, think about the curve is going in this direction, all right, this circle here, this tangent line, boop, 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 it should be going in the same direction at, when it hits it, when it's tangent to it. All right, so for a circle, right, we could simply follow Euclid and say the tangent is the line that intersects the curve once and only once, as you see in this figure here. But it gets, it's, a, it's much more compl complicated for curves, um, and this definition is inadequate. So let me, so let me set up this problem here. All right, suppose you got this uh, graph, y is equal to f of x, all right? And you, whoosh, whoosh, okay, this is what the graph looks like here. And you want to find the line. You want to find the slope, excuse me, the slope of the line tangent to this graph at this point P, okay? So you want to find the slope of this line right here. Well, so here's the thing. This is, this is the problem. You go, okay, so what, what do I need to know to find the slope? Okay, so if you think about, you know, your slope equation, right? It's change in y over change in x. So what you need, okay, what you need is you need two points on the line. Okay, but, but here's the problem. I'm only giving you one point on this line, okay? I'm saying, look, you got to be tangent to the graph right here. So we know this point. This is the point x. And here's the y value. So it's our x comma y. But notice how what I don't give you is I, I don't give you any other point on the line. I just say, okay, all right, you know, find the slope of this line. So it's like, 
how, how do you do this? You, you only gave me one one um, point on the line, right? You want it, you want it to be the tangent line. I'm telling you it has to be tangent at that little point right there. So like, how do I find the slope? So it's really complicated actually. Um, so you, since you only have one point, you can approximate the line, okay, by picking some point on the graph of y is equal to f of x. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, all right, well, I'm going to I'm going to approximate this tangent line. I'm going to pick a, a point up here, okay. And this point here will be x plus what we call delta x. So some some change in x, right? So this is how much I'm changing x to get to here. And this is my y plus delta y. Okay. This so is my change in x over my change in y. All right. So look, we can this this forms a a new line right here. This is what's called the secant line. All right. And this right here, this y value is equal to f of x and this y plus delta y, this change in y here is equal to f of x plus delta x, okay? So here's the thing, all right, I got this line and I'm saying this line is gonna be an approximate for this blue line. So the slope of this new this new secant line, so okay, we'll call it MSEC for slope of secant line. It's change in y over change in x, right? Well, what is my change in y? This is my second y value. This is f of x plus delta x minus my original y value, which is just f of x, all over delta x. So it would be x plus delta x minus x, and you can see that the x's cancel out. And this is what I have. All right, so now he here's the fundamental concept or idea. Look at the red line I drew, okay, on the screen or uh, you know how you're watching this video. And you're gonna say, okay, well, I wanted to be an approximation for that blue tangent line. Okay, I wanna find the slope of that blue tangent line. Like, does that red, the slope of the red line look like it's a really good approximation for the blue tangent line? It's like, no, 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 it's not, right? Like, I, I, I could pick a better, better line. And like, how would you, how would you, you know, pick a better line? Well, what you wanna do is like, well, Matt, why did you pick this point? Why not pick a point closer and closer and closer to the value? Okay, closer and closer points. And here, here's what's happened. So here's what we're seeing. We're seeing that the, this is the slope of the of the um, of the tangent line. We're approximating it with the slope of the secant line. Okay, and you're saying, all right, well, I want to get a better and better approximation, right? So why not move the point here? Look, my line gets better. If I move the point here, it gets closer and closer to the tangent line, closer and closer to the tangent line. So what you're gonna do is you shrink delta x. You're gonna shrink delta x. You're gonna decrease delta x. And what happens is, is the line gets closer and closer and closer and closer to the tangent line. But now here's the thing. You cannot find the exact slope of the tangent line until delta x and this 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 arrow here means goes to zero okay goes to zero all right so it's like but, but matt if, if i want to find you know the slope of the tangent line as delta x goes to zero there's a problem right here's where delta x is but you cannot divide by zero. Okay, so this is a problem. And let me show you uh, uh, an, an interactive um, uh, example of this on the next slide. So, so here's the problem, okay? So let's look at this graph. Suppose you want to find the tangent line at this point right here, OK? 
Okay. Find the slope of the tangent line. at this point. So what you would do is you'd, you'd say, okay, I'm going to approximate it with this, what Matt was calling the secant line. So I'm going to pick a point over here and I'm going to keep decreasing my delta x to get better and better approximation to the to the tangent line here, okay? So it keeps going, duh, 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 duh. but as I know, what happens as I shrink delta x, shrink delta x as it goes to zero, I'm going to go back to the last slide, I get a divide by zero in my denominator which I can't hide. So in calculus, we learned how to evaluate this. So we learned how to evaluate this as delta x goes to 0. And it's what's called the limit process. So what you'll see when you, even when you get to the next lecture in this class is we'll, we'll take the limit as delta x goes to zero and sees what ha and sees and see what we get. And we'll we'll be able to see that we'll we'll learn some tricks to be able to evaluate this right here, okay? And this is this is one of the key concepts in calculus called differentiation, and it's 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 a lot of fun and we're going to spend a, a really significant amount of our time in our class learning this. All right, so how to find the slope of the tangent line to a curve at any point. All right, the next is going to be the area problem, OK? And so he here's the next uh, problem we're going to need uh, calculus for, OK? Or, or this limit process that I'm going to talk about. So suppose you want to find the area under the curve of some, fun some, some graph y is equal to f, f of x, OK, between two x values, between x is equal to a and x is equal to b and above the x-axis. So this kind of like pink shaded region, okay? How would I find this area? Well, so here's the thing, like if you think back to geometry, there's, there's no mathematical formula to find the area of this shape here, all right? So I, I'm not even sure how I would do it. So again, just like going back here, when I said I wanted to find the slope of the tangent line, I'd approximate it. Okay, so there, here I approximate it by finding this, the slope of this, this secant line, and I said, look, I could do better and better and better by decreasing delta x. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to approximate the area with rectangles. All right, why rectangles? Well, we know the, the, the formula to find the area of a rectangle. It's just length times width. So watch. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just draw some rectangles, okay? And these rectangles are going to be of equal width, at least to start here with these initial ones, okay? And now watch. Imagine that I drew this so that, <laughs> that they're all equal width, just so you get the idea, okay? And you can see what's going on here, right? I'm getting a good approximation for the area, OK, with these rectangles. This last one's going to be a little off, but you get the idea. OK, so the width of each rectangle is we're going to call the width delta x. It's the change in x to so go from here to here to here to here to here to here. It's all the same. It's going to be delta x. Okay. What that then means, okay, this is important here, is the, the length of each rectangle is determined by its functional value f of x. So I'll plug, you know, this this first value in to get my first f of x or my first length, and then so on, and then so on, and then so on. All right. So what that means then, the approximate area is equal to the sum 
of the areas of the rectangle of the rectangles. So I would sum up the area of all these rectangles. So now let me ask you this. Um, you know, think about the answer as I'm, as I'm lecturing here. <laughs> Did I get the area perfectly right? It's like, no, look, I underestimated the area. Because you can see there's some area that's not covered by a rectangle. Like it's this little, these spaces here is area that I'm not capturing with my rectangles. Okay. So I'm, you know, it's like I'm close to the area, but I'm not like perfect, perfect, perfect. So to get a better approximation, We decrease the width of each rectangle. So we decrease our delta x, okay, and we add more rectangles. All right, so let me show you that on the next slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I want to decrease my width and put more and more rectangles under there. And as I make more and more rectangles, right, they're going to get, you know, this is going to get pushed in and you're going to have more and more, less, more and more rectangles and less and less space that's not picked up by a rectangle. And you can see what's going on here. Okay, so in this first example here, I only picked four rectangles to approximate the area. And I said, I could do better. So I pick eight rectangles and you can see I do even better and I'd probably do better with 16 rectangles or 32 or 100 rectangles. You know, the more rectangles I put under there, under the graph, um, by decreasing the width, okay, um, it gets better and better and better. I get a better approximation of the area. So let me show you that here you can see visually, all right? So I wanna find the area between x is equal to four and x is equal to 24 under the curve and above the x-axis, okay? So what's going on here, if I start with one rectangle, then two, then five, then 10, then 20, you know, you can see as I, as I increase the number of rectangles, I get a better and better approximation of the area underneath, okay? So if you look what's going on here, as I said, the width, you look over here, width goes to zero, okay? As width, which is delta x, goes to zero, all right, we get a better picture of the area under the curve. And again, it's like, you know, that's great, Matt, but you know, if you look back, delta x goes to zero, that's the width of the rectangles, so going back, Right? If the width of the rectangle, that means length times width, well, it's zero, I, the area would be zero. It's like, how, that doesn't make any sense. So again, what we do is we look what happens as x approaches zero. Okay, so we use this limit process. To evaluate as delta x goes to zero. And what you'll see later on here is this area under the curve problem is solved with a calculus method called integration. And that's going to be one of the last topics we look at. All right, so keep these in mind. Uh, the, these as, as we go through the rest of the class, what will happen is um, I'm going to introduce this limit process. And you're going to hear me talking about the slope of the tangent line. That's going to be the first couple chapters of the textbook. And then you're going to hear me talking about area under the curve. And that's going to be the last topic we, we cover. And I hope the, the, this quick introduction to the to the tangent line problem and the area problem, you know, give you, you know, kind of make you excited to study calculus. We're going to be doing a lot of really fun stuff over the coming uh, course, and I'm excited to be teaching it to you. And um, you know, look forward to you watching my follow-up videos on this and, and at least initially learning more about this limit process.